Welcome to the Homegrown Hunter TV. I'm your host, Steve Elmy. I landed last night here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. I got all my food for the week. I'm solo hunting for white-tailed deer. You're gonna wanna stay tuned. There'll be lots of action. We'll have a good time. Welcome to another great season of the Homegrown Hunter. Good girl. Homegrown Hunter TV is brought to you by Rackstacker, Canada's leader in big game attractants. Campbellford Chrysler, a small town dealer with a huge inventory. Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Bishop Lake Outdoors, First Place Trailers, Altan Outdoor Solutions. Badlands Packs and Apparel, the original portable winch, Nature of Design signs and graphics, and these other fine sponsors. I was thinking that somebody was in trouble ahead of me when I was headed back for lunch. The skies were full of smoke and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to be pulling up on. After seeing the trackers disking around the fires, I had realized that they were doing prescribed fires, something that doesn't happen very often in Ontario. Manitoba farmers have been having some very wet years in the past and they were losing to the cattails so they could finally burn back the sloughs to get their fields back. So in front of me to my left is a band of bush. There's a huge pile of bush behind me. And Mike and I seem to think that they're bedded up behind me, they're crossing the road, coming out this band of bush. And in front of me is at least a couple hundred acres of combine corn, or they call it picked corn. He sat here last night and seen 12 does in a buck. But it wasn't a white tail, it was a nice big 160 class muley. So I wanted to get in here and scout. I got about half hour, 45 minutes left of shooting light. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this fence line and see where they're coming out. And then tomorrow afternoon, if I spot the deer I'm looking for, which is a big wide 10 pointer, I'm gonna set up the blind specifically to go after that white tail. So we're going to hang out here and see what happens over the next half hour or so. And then they're also coming out of a big patch of bush over to the right here. You can see all the smoke from earlier, like guys are burning all over the place. Having a great time here in Manitoba. Closed captioning has been brought to you by the original portable winch. Compact, lightweight and can be carried anywhere.
So this morning, I've been scouting this river valley. There's a wheat stubble field behind me here, and about a mile up is where that corn stubble was where I was sitting last night. I didn't see any deer at the corn stubble. The, the bedding was behind us, or at least we assumed the bedding was behind us. They were cutting through that corn field and heading down to this valley. But Mike met up with me last night, and during twilight, we ended up coming down this road, and the deer were coming out of this valley. So we just wanted to see where they were bedding, kind of get an idea of you know what pockets they were in. This river valley is completely covered with little pockets and little gullies where the deer can bed and face the sunlight. It's eight degrees today. It's supposed to go up to plus 19 or something. Not conducive for good deer hunting. Hopefully with a little bit of scouting, we can get onto some deer. Obviously uh, the colder weather is important when it comes to hunting and it hasn't been, hasn't been cold at all. In fact, I'm just, literally got a thin layer of badlands on but it's supposed to be dropping the temperature this weekend to minus eight during the night and minus two during the day so once that happens we're really optimistic on what's going to move and there's a wheat stubble field right beside me here too so they've been up here feeding we ended up counting like 30 some odd deer last night while we were in our travels back to the cabins they're here we just got to get on them persistence It wasn't very long into daylight and I could start seeing deer funnel through the river bottoms where it was cool during the heat of the day. Being the first week of November, it was unseasonably warm and in the high teens during the midday. We only expected to see less movement up on the flats. In conditions like this, the deer would prefer to be in the hollows and this is an area that I do not have permission for yet. So all I could do is try and find out spots to pinch them off before they make their way back up in the evening. Well, I had a decent morning this morning and seen lots of deer on that valley. Unfortunately, they all went to bed. So I decided to come back out quick bite to eat. Now I did get a phone call from a local farmer that spotted a couple of good bucks in one of his fields. Word got out that I was in the area. He called me up and asked me if I wanted to come and try him. So tonight we're gonna set up a blind and get after him. So stay tuned. I'll get some food into me and we're on our way. This week's tech tip is brought to you by Huckabones Equipment, Ottawa Valley's Kubota dealer. Being my first year hunting in Manitoba, I had planned on taking an Altan blind just to be handy. You just never know when you're going to need to pop up a stand last minute. Quite often the first sight is the best when brushing in the blind, so do what you can in order to brush the spot in to make it look good and not get picked off by the deer. Having a few hands to get this done before the evening hunt was a bonus, and with the higher winds was going to keep me concealed and out of view. Sitting along a rail bed seemed to be like a good idea. That was until the RCMP showed up. I had rented a vehicle from the airport on my way in and it had BC plates on it. I guess someone called them saying that they were concerned about a BC plate next to the railroad tracks, which I have understandings for. However, it kind of screwed up my evening. I didn't see a thing. That ain't a very frustrating night. It's been extremely windy all afternoon. I thought it would calm down right at dark and then you'd start to see deer. Farmer said he's seen 30 to 35 deer out in this field last night. I'm assuming at twilight because they're obviously not here yet. Um, they're coming from a back swamp that looks to be on the map about seven, 800 yards away. So I'm assuming they're coming from there. But... I can't get her down here in Manitoba. I'm probably going to go right back to the spot I was at this morning and see if I can spot a buck cruising down those valleys. Frustrating.
huge body on that deer. There were certainly lots of mule deer on the move this morning. For a place that doesn't allow any mule deer tags, I was really surprised with the amount that I was seeing. Especially knowing that I was specifically after whitetails and could barely get an eye on a decent buck. An exciting morning. Obviously not the species I'm looking for, but I've been watching this really good muley deer buck and he's been sauntering down through this valley and he was originally with a group of does, but he's not with them anymore. He's just cruising and you know you can see how kind of slow he's moving around. It's it's nice to observe these deer. This I'm sure they act no different than whitetail deer where they're just sauntering around looking for that first receptive doe. But I'm going to wait and see if he beds up because he keeps crossing through all these little patches. Yeah, he's just looking around. And if he beds up, I'm going to see if I can get in on him. I'm not going to shoot. I'm not going to hunt him, obviously. But if I can get close to him, I'd like to see how big he is. I'm 800 yards away right now. It's hard to judge him, but you can clearly tell he's a big deer. Really deer... Something I've always wanted to pursue. Might find a new passion here in a minute. Just wait for him to bed up. And go see if we can get a closer look. Only seen a couple of white tails so far today. And uh, the temperature finally dropped. We're down to two degrees. The wind is probably at minus three. But this valley doesn't hold a lot of whitetails. Certainly holds a lot of mule deer, and it's not legal to hunt them in Manitoba. Or I'd be going to get a tag. Well, that was a ton of fun. I got to within 40 yards of that buck. And he was in this huge kind of gully. I'm gonna show you one right here. This is what's so hard to follow these deer because from a distance, I was actually way over there. Where those road bikes are. I've seen him bed up over here. I'm out of shape climbing these hills. But uh, he disappeared and I knew he kind of went to bed. So I snuck over here real quick grab my gear. Of course I'm not hunting muleys, I just wanted to see if I can get close to them. It's hard to judge the topography of where he was bedded. And I got to within 40 yards of him and jumped him. I didn't realize I was that close. But nonetheless, this is what he was bending. Over there it looks relatively flat with some bushes, but it's a huge ravine and he was bedded on the uh, opposite side. Winded his back, facing the opening and he caught my he caught me so my bad tons of fun I'm back after the white tails going for breakfast now and now this week's cut to the chase segment brought to you by Rackstad I'm staring at a place called Prairie Sky Cabins the owner Leonard Coop offered to take me on a drive through his old stomping grounds when you're in a new area of hunting, it's important to get to know the locals and offer help when you can. It certainly builds future relationships for hunting that might be in the future. It also shows you an area of where the deer might be if you're not used to the terrain, because I'm used to the Ontario terrain. Handy technology. Oh, I know, eh? I remember when I first got into trail cameras, it was the ones that you crank with your thumb. My, oh, is that right? Yeah, my that was back in 2003, 2004. Leonard was certainly proving to me that there's good deer That's in the area, 
but likely due to the heat of the day, they were moving down at night. This made it a big challenge as I was already short of time. And then we moved up into this area when I was five years old. And we've been here ever since. My dad had beef and, and grain. And uh, he was pretty well full-time carpentry the whole time. So we kinda had two or three jobs on the go all the time. I've been like that too, I've been carpentry all my life. The carpentry certainly shows in the family, as I had a beauty spot to stay with all the amenities. Thanks for the road trip, Leonard. The weather was starting to swing, and it's getting cold. We'll see if it makes a difference. Quite the eventful morning. I decided to get off the food source and get back into the bedding area. I'm up on this hilltop. It's got an awesome view of the river valley. I ended up spotting a couple white tails earlier. In fact, I had a two year old eight pointer that come up over the hill behind me here. And uh, he caught me off guard. The old heart started going. It was a pretty exciting spot. And down this hillside behind me. There's a white tail buck right behind me. I'm sitting on this ravine. He walks right in behind me. He's only a two year old. Wow, got the heart going for sure. in this hillside so hopefully they come down into here for the day and I might uh, have a crack at one of those Manitoba monsters. I'm finally going to get a chance to hunt with my buddy Mike Berger. Mike and I have been friends for over 10 years now and having the chance to finally sit down in the blind was a treat. I'm hoping he could bring me some luck because so far I haven't had that much. Nasty freezing rain in the forecast, cold wind and the rut is on. Rattling was expected to work well. But it wasn't until the next morning when we finally laid our eyes on a mature buck. This buck was in range for me, however respect to the other landowners trumps everything. The buck was on the wrong side of the fence and all I could do was watch, hoping for an opportunity on the other side which didn't happen either.
Can you see the buck? Last five minutes, last day of the hunt. I fly out tomorrow. Tyler and I were going back to camp and we ended up spotting a deer that was feeding in the middle of a probably 200 acre cut cornfield. So we ended up using the wind to our favor. We come all the way around to this hay field in the truck, jumped out, tried to put the stock on him. He was about 300 yards from where we parked. And as we were rolling to the top of the hill to get a, a spot on him, we spotted another deer to our right and it turned out it was the buck we were after. He already got it. He already got her pegged, or got us pegged, and that's the way she goes. That's hunting. Anyhow, I'm cold. It's minus 15 with a heavy wind chill. I'm heading back to get my stuff packed up. It's the way she goes, folks. That's hunting. I'm Steve Elmy, your host of the Homegrown Hunter TV. Thanks for joining me this week. Until next time. For past episodes, be sure to check out hghtv.ca. Until next time.